Welcome to Harvest Kids today. Hey, guess what? I prepared this yummy feast for all of you. What's the occasion? Oh, well, today we're talking about how Jesus is preparing a feast for us. We are gonna worship the Lord today. We're gonna do a yummy snack. We're gonna play a game and we're gonna have some fun. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. I can't stop staring at this candy. <gasps> well, you might have to be a little patient. We can eat up a little bit later. But right now, we're gonna start with worship. So let's encourage the kids to stand up wherever they're at. Stand up and let's get worshiping now. Like throwing blessings in the air. It's like throwing blessings in the air. When you pray to Jesus, prayer, talk to God, listen back. Prayer, it's like throwing blessings in the air. When you pray to Jesus.
Hey everyone, welcome to another Focus Up moment. This is where we take time out of our service to slow it down, change it up, and focus on God. And today we're going to be worshiping Him, singing a song together. So this is my wife, Crystal. Hi. And we are going to sing this song together. And it's called King of Kings. So let's sing. Let's do it. Without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin keep the word from a throne of endless glory. focusing up with us today. That's all for now. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye. Hey, boys and girls, it's Mr. Mike here, and today we're going to play a game called Zoom It Out. This is where we zoom in on 10 different pictures, and then we zoom out slowly, and it's your job to guess what the picture is. Today, it's all food items, so let's put picture number one up now. Zoomed in all the way, I see a color red. Now, what food could be color red? Well, let's zoom it out just a little bit. All right, all right. And just a little bit more now. Okay, we're gonna give you the answer. Shout it out if you know it. It's a apple. That's right, everybody, good job. Okay, we're gonna put picture number two up now. All right, I see some brown coloring. That's really zoomed in. Let's zoom it out just a little more. Oh, we got a little bit more information. That's great. Okay, zoom it out one more time. Do you know what it is? Yummy. Okay, the answer is it's a waffle with some toppings. That looks good. Okay, next picture up now. Okay, this is an interesting color. It's not red, it's not orange, it's like a pinkish red. Okay, let's zoom it out just a little bit. What? A that kind of looks like a fish fin, but hmm, I don't think that's it. Let's zoom it out one more time. Okay, I know what it is. I'm gonna tell you in three, two, one, it's a dragon fruit. Did you even know that there's a dragon fruit that exists? Those are good. All right, next picture up now. Oh, okay, we got some grilling going on. Can you see really charredness? All right, zoom out just a little bit. All right, a little bit more now. Okay, do you know what it is? All right, I'll give you the answer in three, two, one. This is a rotisserie chicken, all right. Did you know what that one was? Oh, I love those. You can cut them up and put them on so many different things. Okay, next picture up now. Okay, I wonder if you can give me a spare picture. Ah, that was a bad joke. Okay, zoom it out a little bit. A spare, a little bit more. And this picture, of course, is asparagus. Did you know that one? Great job, everybody. Okay, let's get our next picture up now. Oh, zoomed in all the way. There's a goldish color. What food is colored gold? Hmm, let's zoom it out just a little bit more. Okay, okay, and how about just a little bit more zoomed out? Well, the answer to this one is it's 
potatoes, which you can make french fries and mashed potatoes and potato soup, potato salad, potato salad soup, lots of different things with potatoes. Okay, next picture up now. Okay, we're zoomed all the way in. All right, let's zoom out just a little bit more and zoom out a second time. And we're gonna give you the answer in three, two, one. It's raspberries. Good job, everybody. Did you know that it was a raspberry, not a blueberry, raspberry. You think they'd be called red berries, you know, cause blueberry, red berry, no, raspberry. All right, let's get the next picture up now. Yum, yummy, yummy, yummy. Well, it's all the way zoomed in. We have to zoom it out just a little bit more right now. All right, hey, shout it out if you know the answer. We're gonna zoom it out just a little bit more. And it's everyone's favorite dish, it's spaghetti. Yes, and I heard it's even gluten-free spaghetti. Maybe not, you never know. All right, next picture up now. Okay, I think this is beach sand, which is not a food, but let's zoom it out just a little bit now. Okay, I don't know, I'm kind of crusty at this game. <laughs> It could be a crust to something. Let's zoom it out just a little bit more. And we're gonna give you the answer in three, two, one. It's an apple pie. I really like apple pie, don't you? I think this is called French apple pie, wee oui, wee. Oui. All right, last picture up on the screen now. All right, I hope this uh, picture gels with you. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna zoom it out just a little bit more right now. And zoom it one more time. And we'll give you the answer. It is everyone's favorite dessert, gelato. So good. Well, thanks for playing our game today with me called Zoom It Out. We'll see you next time. That's all for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Lester. And welcome to Unboxing the Bible, which is kind of like unboxing something you're really excited about, but it's way better than that because it's God's word. Today's word is... Today's word comes from the Bible verse, Matthew 22, 14, which says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Now say it with me. Repeat after me. Say, For many are called, For many are called, But few are chosen. But few are chosen. Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 14. 14. Great job. Thanks for unboxing the Bible with us today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. guys, Jackie here, and welcome to today's Bible story. Before we get started, I want to ask you, have you guys ever gotten an invitation to a party? Isn't it exciting when maybe you get one in the mail, or maybe your mom shows you one that she's gotten on email? It's so exciting. I love being invited to a party. Do you guys? Yeah, parties are so much fun. There's always what? A lot of food, a lot of friends, maybe some good music, some fun games. Well, our story today is about how heaven is compared to like this big feast where everyone is invited. That's right. So why don't you guys open up your Bibles with me? We're in Matthew chapter 22, and we're gonna be starting at verse one. I'm gonna read just a little bit to you. It says this, Jesus told other parables before I go on. Do you guys remember what a parable is? It's like when Jesus told a story to kind of describe what he was teaching because people learn better that way and he wanted us to understand. So he said this, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Oh, cool, a great wedding feast. So not even just a party, it's a wedding. That's extra special. Well, in this feast, the son invites all of the people who are invited, and guess what? They don't come. If you were throwing a party and had made all of these plans, wouldn't you be sad that no one came? Yeah, I would be too. The king was upset. So then he instructed his servants to go out and invite everybody to the wedding feast to come and enjoy what he has prepared. So many people came. It says this in verse 10. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. 
Wow, that's much better. An empty party is kind of sad, but a full party? That's super fun. But did you catch that? It said good and bad people. Okay, let's keep reading. It says this in verse 11. But when the king came to meet the guest, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. What do you guys wear to a wedding? Do you go in, in a t-shirt? No, you wear something that might be kind of itchy, scratchy, but it looks nice, right? You're usually dressed up. Well, in this case, the king found a man who didn't come to the party dressed properly. And he said, how is it that you're here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. And so the king, he told him to leave the party. And the final verse here is our memory verse. So commit this to your memory. For many are called, but few are chosen. Now you might be sitting there thinking, what does this story mean? This guy, he was just invited off the street. He didn't have the right clothes on. That's why he wasn't wearing the right clothes. But there is a deeper meaning here, of course. Jesus told these parables to help teach us something deeper. And what he was saying here is like the kingdom of heaven is like a great party where everyone is invited. But like the first wave of people, some people turn down the king's offer. Jesus invites everyone to believe in him, but not everybody does. So this man without the proper clothes, he accepted the invitation to the party, but he did not get ready for it. And what he represents is like somebody who pretends to believe. Oh yeah, I would love to follow Jesus, but then doesn't, he doesn't really believe. And so therefore he doesn't have the proper clothes on. Now we know the Bible tells us that when we believe in Jesus, when we go to heaven, we are given new garments, pure, clean, white robes because Jesus cleanses us. That's right. All of the sin and yuckiness is wiped away when we have faith in Jesus and we are made new. So this man is like someone who has not been made new yet. Do you guys understand? So when the Bible tells us that many are called but few are chosen, what that means is that all people are invited to trust in Jesus. All people are invited to have a special relationship with him and to have their sins forgiven and to spend eternity in heaven with God one day. But some people choose not to accept the invitation or they choose not to listen and obey Jesus. They might pretend on the outside, but on the inside, they really haven't been forgiven because they haven't asked. And so we want to make sure that we don't just show up to church and pretend that we believe. We want to put our faith and trust in Jesus in a real way. He knows and sees everything and he will help us to know him with all our hearts. But it's up to us to accept Jesus' invitation to his great party and to put our trust and faith in him and obey him. So to wrap up, there are three things I want you to remember from this lesson. Is number one, Jesus is preparing a feast. That's right, in Revelation it says that there will be the marriage supper of the Lamb. There will be this great big feast for believers in Jesus. Number two, I want you to remember, Jesus is inviting you. That's right. You are invited. You are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb when you believe. And number three, we should be inviting others. Like the king's servant who went out and invited all the other people in the town. We can be like that. We can invite people to know Jesus, to have a relationship with him by sharing the gospel and the truth of God's word. All right, guys. Well, I love going over this story with you today. I like how these parables make us think a little bit harder about what Jesus is saying. And once you do, you understand a little bit more about heaven. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Jackie. Hi, guys. I'm Esther. Hi, guys. I'm Jude. And welcome to Snacky Time! I sure am hungry. How about you guys? Yeah! Yeah! All right. Well, today we were talking about a feast in heaven, so I thought it would be so fun if we made a little feast in a cup. How does that sound to you guys? Cool! All right. Esther, can you tell everybody what we have on this plate? 
We have chips, cheese, and pepperoni. Oh, excellent. And Jude, what do we have on this plate? We have strawberries and grapes. Ooh, does this sound like a good snack to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so all you need besides some of your favorite snacks is a cool little cup to put them in. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our pepperoni here. And you could use, if you don't like that, you could use turkey or ham. And we're gonna put a couple of slices, but you put however many you want, kind of up against the cup like that. Good job, Esther. It looks like ice. It looks like ice, ah! <laughs> okay, the next thing we're gonna do is take some grapes and put them at the bottom. Should we try one? Sure. Ready? One, two, three. Mmm. Okay. So here, let's put some grapes at the bottom. What's your favorite? Cotton candy ones. Cotton candy grapes. Have you guys ever had those? They truly taste like cotton candy. I'm going to taste the pepperoni. We'll taste that in just a second. So once you guys have some grapes at the bottom, Jude, can I see yours? Excellent job. Now we're going to take a cheese. Would you guys each like a cheese? I can help you open it if you like. There's a little cut on the top, and you should be able to open it. You could use, this is Colby Jack cheese, but you could use string cheese. You could use cheddar cheese. You can use whatever cheese you like. Even goat cheese. Even goat cheese. All right, we have our cheese, and you could just tuck your cheese kind of like by the salami like that. You can make it artistic. Good job. Like this behind? Yeah, that's perfect. And kind of to the side so you can like see this? it. Excellent work. Like that? And now we're gonna take a few of our crackers or chips and put them in the cup. Like that. Put them towards the side so you have a little bit more room. And then we're gonna finish it off with a couple of fresh strawberries. <gasps> Look at that, we have some protein, we have some cheese, we have some yummy, crunchy goodness, and then we have some sweet berries. Does this look good to you guys? Mm -hmm. Ready, cheers. Let's enjoy our snack. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for joining us today in our service. You know, we learned that Jesus is preparing a feast for people in heaven who know him. And just like the man that wasn't wearing the right clothes, we do need to know Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I bet the feast in heaven is gonna be way better than the feast here, but this feast looks good. So we're gonna dig in. But if you wanna see more services for Harvest Kids, you can check us out on YouTube and Instagram at Harvest Kids Live. That's right. All right, kids, are you ready to dig in? Three, two, one, bye-bye. <laughs> I'm gonna get you.